Hey everyone, it's Amy from thecrazycraftlady.com. Let's talk about Santa photos. Now, I will admit, I was not always the best mom when it came to things like baby books and scrapbooks. In my defense, I blame it on the fact that I had two babies at once. My twins are now eight years old. However, the one thing that I've always been very faithful about is we take a photo with Santa every single year. Now it's 2020 and I'm not quite sure how the Santa photo is going to look this year. We may have to do it virtually or something, but it's going to happen. But then you take the Santa photo and you are at the mall and you get a digital file or they send you with a pack of photos or you take a Santa photo yourself and so it's on your computer in a folder. And then what happens? At best, maybe you print it out and stick it in the family photo album, but that's just about it. Well, last year I decided to do something different and I printed out all of our Santa photos in black and white and I laid them flat on our coffee table, kind of as a table runner of sorts. This would be a great option with any sort of side table or maybe a table behind a couch where you can just lay everything out on display. But then that kind of got me thinking, what else can you do with all these Santa photos? Or Say you don't do Santa photos. Say every year on Christmas Eve, you take a family photo in front of the Christmas tree, or you take a picture in front of your fireplace in everyone's matching pajamas, or whatever photo that you use in your holiday or Christmas cards that you mail out that year. Whatever annual photo that you have around holiday time would be great for any of these projects. So I whipped up four craft slash DIY projects that you can use at holiday time to display all of these wonderful memories from holidays past. Let's get making. Okay, so first I started with these little frame ornaments from Hobby Lobby. They came in, I think, a pack of six. So I think I'm gonna actually have to go back and buy some more, but I'll start with these. And they're just simple little like almost really thick cardboard frames with then a circle in the center for a photo. So I started with, once again, my Waverly chalk paint in moss green. And I just popped out the backer and like the center, like clear part for the photo. And I just gave everything a quick coat with this chalk paint. I really love this moss green. It's like so perfect. It's like this nice sage green. I use it for a lot of different projects. And because these frames were made out of almost like this cardboard material, it really absorbed the paint. So I took my time and I did just one really good thick coat instead of having to wait for the paint to dry and come back and do a second coat. And so I just painted all of the ornaments with the green paint and I was just extra careful where the little twine tie hanger was because I didn't want to have to take that off and put it back on so I just kind of painted around it very carefully. The nice thing about using chalk paint is that it dries quickly so I was able to move on to my next step which was adding photos. So what I did is I just took eight of our photos and I printed them off on just a regular sheet of computer paper and then I traced the clear you know protector from the ornament onto each of the photos. Now the circle was a little bit bigger than my photos which is fine and I actually wanted it th to be that way which you'll see why in the next step. So I just took a skinny sharpie marker and I kind of traced around the photos and then I just cut them out with my regular craft scissors. Then once everything was cut out, I put my photos back into the ornaments to keep them from sliding around. If they weren't perfectly circle, I just used a piece of double-sided tape to get the photo to stick to the backer. Then I put the clear plastic acrylic over top and popped it back into the ornament frame. Thank you. 
Now you could absolutely leave these ornaments as is, or you could write the year on the frame, whatever you want, but I decided to do one extra step and I used some nautical jute rope. I buy it at the Dollar Tree and I just cut a small length of it and then I used my hot glue gun to attach the rope inside the rim of the frame. I just added a little extra dimension and made these look a little bit more personalized. But like I said, you could totally skip this step. You could add glitter to these ornaments. I think uh, gold leaf would look really great on these ornaments as well. Or you could just take, you know, like a paint marker in black or gold or whatever you like, and maybe just write the year that the photo was taken. And then as for displaying these ornaments, I actually hung these up on my mantle with a garland. So the way that I display our um, stockings every year is not on individual hooks, but actually on just like a rod. So I use two hooks and I have to secure them to my mantle using like a command strip or something. Otherwise they won't hold all the weight of the, or of the um, ornaments and the garland. The stockings as well as this year I added the Santa photos and then I just kind of draped a garland in the back. I think it's kind of like a fun and unique way to display your Christmas stockings. And if you want to see how I made those tags and those bows, this was a project I made last year so I will link to that video below. Next up, I finally got around to using up some of the scrap wood from my scrap wood pile because this last winter we actually ended up replacing all of the door casings and baseboards in our upstairs. So I had a lot of extra scrap door casings. So that's what this is, but you guys could use just about any type of thin wood that you wanted. So I just cut four lengths. I think they were each like 16 and a half inches long. And then I just used my Waverly Antique Wax. This basically gives the effect of staining the wood without actually having to use wood stain and having all the fumes that come with it. Since I did this project here in close to winter time in Minnesota, I didn't feel like having to go outside or open a window. So by using this Antique Wax from Waverly, which you get at Walmart, you can kind of achieve the same look as staining without, you know, the fumes and everything. So I just kind of did a nice even coat all over the wood. You can do it as thick or as thin as you want depending on how deep the stain look that you want. But then the thing with this antique wax is it can be a bit sticky if you don't let it dry completely. So you really wanna set everything aside and let it completely dry before you move on to the next step. Okay, so then I came back. I'm at my kitchen table now because I had to be able to spread this out a little further and I can't get the right camera angle at my craft desk. But I just took each of the four pieces and I stacked one on top of each other so that the unfinished sides were together. You want the finished sides facing out. And then I just grabbed some wired holiday check ribbon. I think I got it at Michael's last year on sale. Like use whatever you want, but I liked this, you know, red check ribbon. And at first I cut a little hanger loop. So all you, it's just enough of a loop that you can hang it. I would recommend cutting it larger than you would think you would need because you can always knot it off and make it smaller, but you can't make it larger if you need the hanger to be bigger. So I just secured that in place with my hot glue. And then it was time to make the two, I guess, sides of the tree. So basically I want the ribbon to kind of create a triangle effect. So it kind of gives the illusion of a Christmas tree. I folded the ribbon in half and I secured it at the top using a bit of hot glue. And then I also secured each of the two ends spaced evenly with hot glue as well. And then I came back with my Gorilla wood glue. This wood glue is, I think, probably older than I thought it was, so starting to dry out, so I wasn't able to squeeze it on. So I had to come back with a paintbrush and apply it 
So note to self, buy more wood glue. But I just gave like a generous coat of wood glue all across the wood. And then here's my hack. I didn't wanna have to use clamps and wait for the wood glue to dry. So I use wood glue and hot glue. The hot glue secures the wood in place right away. And then over time, the wood glue dries and then gives it a firmer hold. If you use just hot glue, I don't think this would hold over the long run. I would just wait, you know, 24 hours before hanging this up. And then for the clips to hold your photos onto this door hanger, I just used some regular old wooden clothespins. I think I got them at the dollar store and some 3 8 inch ribbon. I used a black buffalo check pattern to kind of complement the red check pattern on the hanger. And then all you do is you cut a length of ribbon to match the length of the clothespin and then give a generous coat of Mod Podge. I would say use more than you think you would need because the ribbon will absorb quite a bit. Use a skinny paintbrush and give a generous coat of Mod Podge to the clothespin and then smooth that cut of ribbon on top of the clothespin. And then just repeat this process for as many Santa photos as you have. And then I just cut out little mini black and white versions of all of our Santa photos. I backed them with a piece of neutral gray color cardstock. And then I just secured them all to this ribbon door hanger to display our Santa photos. And I think it's just a cute little way to display Santa photos, but you could do the same thing with holiday cards or um, if you have an annual family photo that you take at Christmas time, you could do the same thing on this. Next up, we're gonna make more personalized ornaments. I bought these at Hobby Lobby. They're just wood round ornaments in the shape, you know, of a holiday bulb, unfinished wood, but you could also buy these, I'm sure, at any craft store. I think I've seen them at Michael's and Joann's as well. So the first thing you wanna do is you just wanna grab all your wooden ornaments and then print out your um, Santa photos on like black and white, or even color, I guess, just on regular printer paper. You just want regular thin printer paper, not cardstock or anything. So I decided I didn't like the red, so I cut all of the red ribbons off and I was gonna replace the hangers after. And then I went back with my Waverly chalk paint in moss green, so this is the same color of chalk paint that I used on the first ornament craft. So what I ended up doing was painting the hanger part as well as around all the edges. So I actually painted the side just so it would look more uniform. And then I also painted around the edge on the front of the ornament, just in case that when I cut my picture, it didn't go all the way to the edges. I didn't want unfinished wood showing. And then I flipped it over and I painted the back as well. Like I said, the nice thing about chalk paint is this dries really quickly, so I was able to kind of do this all at once without having to wait for one side to dry before I painted the other side. And then I was going to trace a circle onto each of my Santa photos, but then I remembered I have this handy circle cutter that's been in my craft stash and probably hasn't been used in several years. So I pulled that out of a drawer and I just use it to cut perfect circles around all of the Santa photos. If you don't have a circle cutter, it's not a big deal. You could just trace, you know, the ornament onto your photos and cut them out with scissors. This was just a little bit faster and saved me a little bit of time since I was making multiple ornaments at one time. So then once everything was cut out, I came back with my Mod Podge and I just used a regular old brush and applied a thin coat of the Mod Podge to the ornament. I made sure to get full coverage all the way to the edge of the ornament around the whole perimeter of the circle. And then I just grabbed a photo and I stuck it in place and I smoothed it. Because my photo was just a tiny bit smaller than my ornament, I 
did my best to smooth from the center and then work my way out so that I wouldn't be rubbing Mod Podge all over the place. But then I just repeated that process with all of the other ornaments. So then once all the photos were in place, I flipped the ornaments over and I grabbed a black paint marker and I just used this to write on the back of each ornament the year that the Santa photo was taken. So I just used my best handwriting, which isn't phenomenal, but it works. And if you don't want to do, you know, freestyle handwriting, you could do a stencil or you could even use your Cricut to cut out final numbers, whatever you want. And the nice thing is by the time this was done, I would say the Mod Podge was pretty close to drying. You only need about 30 minutes to let the Mod Podge um, adhere the photo to the ornament. And then you can come back and just do another quick coat of Mod Podge over the top of the photo just to seal everything in place. It looks kind of opaque white, but trust me, once it dries, it'll be perfectly clear. And then I replaced that original red hanger with some black and white check ribbon. I just thought this would look better with the black and white photos. Also, this is gonna coordinate better with the garland and ribbon that's on my Christmas tree this year. So I just kind of strung that through and tied it off with a simple knot, super simple, super easy. And then I hung these on my Christmas tree. Okay, so my next project is probably the most involved, but I think it might actually be my favorite. I just started out with a handful of three and a half by five inch plastic picture frames. I got them at Dollar Tree and I removed the plastic coating and then I took out the backer and I also made sure to remove that black um, like photo stand because you don't need to stand these photos up. We're gonna lay them flat. So I just kind of disassembled everything and then I took everything outside and I gave it a quick coat of white spray primer. I actually did two very thin coats. It wasn't for full coverage, it was just to get enough um, coverage that the next coat of paint would stick. So then I came in with my Waverly chalk paint, once again from Walmart. This color is lacquer. I think it's kind of like the perfect Christmas red. I don't use it that often as you can tell because I had to stir it up because I don't use a lot of red in my craft projects. But when I do, I really like this shade. So then I just came in with a paintbrush and I did two coats on all of the frames. It kind of took a while and I only did half a frame at a time so that I wasn't getting paint all over my fingers as I tried to, you know, paint all around the edges and, you know, there's lots of nooks and crannies. So this is a great, this is a great like Netflix or podcast kind of craft project, you know, just kind of relax and listen to something good and do all your painting. The nice thing is with chalk paint, it dries so quickly that by the time you finish the first coat on all the frames, usually that first coat has dried and you can just go back and keep painting so you don't have to like wait overnight for uh, coats to dry. But then once all of that was dried and everything was in place, I popped the backs back into my picture frame with my Santa photos that I had trimmed down to size. Once again, I just did black and white Santa photos. I really like black and white photos. And then I grabbed an 18 by 24 picture frame. I got this one at Michael's. It's their studio decor line. They're usually on sale. And I just took off the plastic and I ripped out the backing and like the plexiglass in it and I got rid of all of that. The backing was kind of this thick cardboard which would be fine if you were just hanging this like on a gallery wall, but I needed something a little bit more sturdy. So I actually came in with a sheet of plywood. Now this is the 
thinnest plywood I could find at the Home Depot and I actually cut it to size myself but if you don't feel confident doing that the people at Home Depot will usually cut it for you. I would just say maybe cut it a little bit smaller than the, the dimensions of your frame so you're sure that it'll fit into the back of the frame once you're done painting it. So I just came in with a foam roller and white, I think this is like white plain Rust-Oleum chalk paint. It comes in a quart can. I think I got it off Amazon. Nothing special. It's just like a plain white. You could use literally whatever kind of white paint you have lying around. And I just did like a really solid good coat of white on the plywood. And then I popped that plywood back into my frame. So like I said, I cut, I traced the back, the original backer from the frame onto the plywood. And then when I cut it, I just cut it like a hair smaller because I just wanted to make sure that the plywood would indeed fit into the back of the frame. And there I have my white background in my wooden frame. And then I came in with all of my Santa frames and I put them in place. You want to set them in place first temporarily just to make sure you get all of the spacing right kind of be nitpicky and then I just came in with command strips and this way like if I have to lift something off and replace it back um, I can do so so I just used you know the velcro command strips I used one at the top of each frame to secure it in place and then for my final step I decided to make this little believe Santa hat decal thing. So I printed it out on printer paper and then I covered the back in pencil. So I just scribbled all over the back of it before I put it in place and I secured it in place with just a little bit of painter's tape so it wouldn't move around. And then I took my black pen and I traced the whole thing. So it's nice to use the painter's tape to make sure because if this little decal moves at all, it can be kind of tricky to get it back in place as you trace it. So just trace the outline of the hat and the pom-pom and all of the letters until it transfers a little bit of that pencil lead onto the surface behind it so that you can then go in and paint. So I will make this decal available. I'll include a link below so if you guys want to print out your own to do your own thing. Or you could easily cut this out on a Cricut with vinyl or make a stencil to paint. You know, whatever, whatever you want. But once I had the outline traced, then I came back in with more of that Waverly chalk paint in that red color, and I just kind of filled everything in. I would recommend using short, smooth brush strokes so it looks a little bit more stenciled on and less painted. You don't want to see a whole lot of brush strokes in the paint. And then just give yourself time to make sure that you get the nooks and crannies, and especially around all the letters, that everything's all smooth and in place. But then that's it. There you have it, you guys. I really like this frame. You could add it to a gallery wall. You could prop it up above a piano or on, on a picture ledge or whatever. I just kind of think this is a fun, neat way to display all of Santa photos for every year. But that's it. Those are my ideas for displaying your annual Santa photos, you guys. I would love to hear your ideas in the comments, what you do with your annual Santa pictures or perhaps what you think you're going to do to get that picture with Santa this year. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy making.